Okay, welcome to the video lesson for transversals for Mr. Dunham's geometry classes at Clover Hill. The first thing I need to say is that you need to make sure that you try the problems uh, that I leave for you to try in the presentation. They are multiple choice and I do want you to try these as you watch the video if you are doing this in class on the day that uh, I have a sub. If you're watching this in class on October 20th, you need to make sure you do the you try exercises and that you look on the board for any further assignments pertaining to this video. The second thing I need to say is that if you are in my first period class, I need you to fast forward to slide number three. Uh, I'll try to leave that the timestamp on the board for the sub. Obviously, I can't tell you it now because I'm making the video live. But uh, fast forward to slide number three as first period has already covered the first two slides. Second even, you can start right here. All right, so transversals, the second part of unit three. We have been studying parallel lines and slope and perpendicular lines. Now we're interested in what happens with those lines when they intersect and form angles and what kind of angle relationships they form. So what's a transversal? A transversal is a line, simply a line that passes through two or more other lines. So when we look at this diagram here, I'm going to label my two lines. I'm going to label them line L and line M. And I'm going to say that they are cut by transversal T. Okay, That's what we say when we have a transversal. A transversal cuts uh, lines. We have lines cut by a transversal. So lines L and M are cut by transversal T. Okay, so here's lines L and M, and uh, we have this transversal T that's intersecting them. We have two sets of four angles that are created when this happens. Notice on the bottom of the screen, I'm saying, hey, when a transversal crosses two distinct lines, several relationships occur. If the two lines coincide, if L and M happen to be right on top of one another, it would just look like two lines intersecting each other. It wouldn't be two lines cut by a transversal and we wouldn't be interested. The two lines do need to be distinct from each other and we've got several interesting angle relationships that will occur and these will help us a lot later on when we get into proofs and things of that nature. So our objective is to be able to talk about the angle relationships formed when we have two lines that are intersected or cut by a transversal. Okay, so let's talk about those angle relationships. Let's get some vocabulary in here. Uh, if you're a color coding kind of person, uh, get out some colored pencils, some colored pens. Uh, now would be the time to do that. Uh, they will be very useful uh, as we do this. Um, so corresponding angles. What do corresponding angles mean? So we talked about the fact that when a transversal, this line here, cuts two lines, we have two sets of four angles that are created. Well, if two angles are in the same position relative to the intersection, we call them corresponding angles. So the two angles I just colored in are corresponding angles. So they're in the same position relative to the intersection. You can think of it almost in terms of uh, directions on a compass rose as soon as I finish writing this word, intersections. Same position relative to the intersections. So you've got your northwest angle, northeast, southwest, southeast. Two angles that are in the same position, in this case the two northwest angles, are corresponding. We say that they are corresponding angles. I'm going to switch to a different color. Here's another pair of corresponding angles. So the black angles correspond and the light blue angles correspond. And then if I go to yellow, I can do even a third pair. Notice we have four pairs of corresponding angles that were created here. So same position relative to the intersections. Alternate interior angles. OK, so these four might seem confusing because they use a lot of the same terms. But uh, once you know them and what they mean, they're actually pretty simple. Alternate interior angles. When we talk about interior angles, we talk about angles that are in between the two lines cut by a transversal. They're in between. They're on the inside. Alternate means they're on opposite sides of our transversal T. So alternate interior angles would be 
are angles that are inside the parallel lines, in between the two lines, and on opposite sides of the transversal. So opposite sides of transversal and inside the lines. Okay, so here's one pair of alternating interior angles, here's another. These are also alternating interior angles, and that's all there is. Okay, they're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they are inside the parallel lines. Okay, alternate exterior angles. So the alternate stays around. We're still on opposite sides of the transversal, but we're on the outside of the parallel lines. So outside the lines, right? Outside the parallel lines, that's what exterior means. And then still opposite sides of transversal, alternate. Opposite sides of, sides, okay, sides, sides of transversal. Don't forget to pause the videos you need to copy this down. I do move fast, it's just because I know you can pause and rewind if you miss something. All right, consecutive interior. So we're back to interior now, interior being on the inside of the lines, but instead of alternating, we're now consecutive. So see if you can figure out what that means. Those are consecutive interior angles. Inside the lines, same side of transversal. So we got inside the lines and the same side of the transversal. So uh, interior and exterior are obviously opposites. And in this sense, consecutive and alternate are opposites. Alternate is opposite sides of the transversal. Consecutive, same side of the transversal. So consecutive exterior must mean, hey, they're outside the lines and they're on the same side of the transversal same side of transversal. So that's those four. That's those four. Just know what the words alternate, consecutive, interior, and exterior, just know what those words mean and you'll be able to piece together uh, the kind of angles you're looking for using the name. All right. Vertical angles, hopefully, you should have seen them before. Vertical angles, when two lines intersect, vertical angles are just the opposite angles. Right, so ignoring this second line down here for a minute, we've got two lines that are just intersecting each other. The angles that are opposite each other are vertical. So there's a pair of vertical angles. Here's a pair of vertical angles. Remember, the color code represents the pair of angles that I'm talking about. Okay, and then here's another pair of vertical angles. We've got four pairs of these. And I'll leave it to you to ID the other pair. Um, but vertical angles are just opposite angles on an intersection. Opposite angles on an intersection. Okay. A linear pair. All right, so hopefully you all remember that the word supplementary means the angle measures add up to 180 degrees. Okay. Remember, angles are measures in measured in degrees, so if two angles are supplementary, it means their measures add up to 180 degrees. Okay. Well, a linear pair is just supplementary angles with a common side. In other words, supplementary angles that touch. Supplementary angles with a common side. And we have several examples of those. Here's a linear pair right here. These two this angle and this angle share a common side, namely this part of the segment right here. Okay, So there are linear pairs, I'm sorry, there are supplementary angles that are not linear pairs. Any two angles can be supplementary if their measures add up to uh, 180 degrees. Any two can be supplementary. Um, but if they share a common side, that's what makes them called a linear pair. So this is the appropriate vocabulary that you need to know. For this unit. This is just vocabulary. Familiarize yourself with these. Make sure you can label them. Okay, and we'll understand why they're important in a minute. How do the pictures below differ? Alright, take a minute and think about that. How are they different? Hopefully you realize that over here, L and M are parallel, and we write that L is parallel to M. And it's cut by transversal T. 
Over here, L and M are not parallel. We still got our transversal T, but L and M aren't parallel. How does that affect the angle relationships? Are all of the angle relationships affected? How does that affect the angle relationships? How do you think? All right. Well, we're going to look at how that affects the angle relationships uh, on the next slide, but you need to know that they are all affected, yes, except for vertical angles and linear pairs. Linear pairs are still linear pairs here. Vertical angles are still vertical angles. Okay, and we'll see why that's important on the next slide. Make sure you really understand the next slide. All right. Are all relationships affected if the two lines are not parallel? Yes, except for vertical angles and linear pairs. So why do we care about all these angle relationships? All right. If they are parallel, these relationships are special and we can get a lot of information from them. This unit is sometimes called parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, these are really, really important relationships that give us a bunch of information. Corresponding angles in two lines cut by two parallel lines cut by a transversal are always congruent. They have the same measure. Okay, and we can denote that by this little line here. Angles with similar markings are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle because why they correspond they're both northwest angles in our corresponding angles so corresponding angles if the lines are parallel and cut by a transversal here's our L here's our M here's our T L is parallel to M corresponding angles are congruent they have the same measure if they're not parallel that's not true and you can see that from this diagram here. Guess what? Alternate interior angles. Congruent. Same measure. Alright? So, alternate interior angles. Here's one. Here's a pair. Right? This is congruent to that. Alternate interior angles. We're inside the lines and we are on opposite sides of the transversal. Alternate exterior angles congruent okay this is making our lives so much easier because we instantaneously know all of these angle measures right alternating exterior here's one angle that's on the exterior well the alternating exterior is down here and look at that we've got two pairs also of vertical angles vertical angles are always congruent it doesn't even matter if the lines are parallel or not look over here these are still congruent. They're still vertical and they're still congruent even though the lines aren't parallel. They're not dependent on two lines being there. All right? They're congruent even though the lines aren't parallel. So that's what I said when I said vertical angles uh, aren't affected by lines not being parallel. That's what I meant. They're always congruent regardless. All right? So now consecutive interior and exterior. Take a look at them. Consecutive interior. Here's a pair of consecutive interiors. You'll notice this one's obtuse, this one's acute, so they can't be congruent, right? Consecutive angles, they're never congruent. But they are supplementary. Their measures always add up to 180 degrees. Consecu consecutive exteriors are supplementary, consecutive interiors are supplementary. They always add up to 180 degrees. So let's label the rest of our angles. Look, these two are vertical. They're congruent. And I'm putting two marks here. Okay. And then this is alternating interior to this. So that's congruent. And this is vertical to that. So that's congruent. Okay. So if you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, this is important. Two parallel lines cut by a transversal implies or means that only two angle measures on the whole diagram. Okay? You will never have three different angle measures on the diagram if they are parallel on the whole diagram. Okay? And we can see that here. The, the one-liners are all congruent. They all have the same measure, same number of degrees. Ditto for the two liners. They're all the same. They're all congruent. So how do we apply this? Let's look. 
Here's practice problem number one. We're finding the measure of each indicated angle. State the name of the relationship between the two angles. Okay? You'll notice these two little hash marks here. That tells us, since they are marked the same, that means they are parallel. These lines are parallel, all right? So, let's first figure out the relationship between these two angles. We have this angle here with a measure of 46 degrees, okay? We want to find the measure of this angle here with the x, all right? So let's take a look. This angle and this angle. They are both inside the parallel lines, and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. They are, therefore, they are alternating interior angles. Okay, And if we go back and look at our chart, alternate interior angles are congruent. So x, this angle, better be 46 degrees. So x is equal to 46. It's as easy as that. All of these angle relationships apply when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So it's really easy to just take these, apply them to these angles, and find the information that we are looking for. Let's look at number two. Number two, we've got a 68 degree angle here. Again, the two lines are parallel. We know that because of the two hash marks. But look, we're on the same side of the transversal this time. Right? So we're inside the lines. We are on the same side of the transversal. So this time we've got consecutive interior angles. And if we go over and look at our chart, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So they're not the same. This is not 68. Do not tell me this is 68. We know that they add up to 180. So 68 plus x is going to be 180. We can subtract 68 from both sides and figure out, I'm sorry, not divide. That should be subtraction sign. Either way, it goes away. x is 180 minus 68 or 112. Okay, So x is going to equal 112 degrees. And if we fill in the rest of these diagrams, look, y'all, um, over here, these are vertical, right? This is 46 too. These are vertical. 46. These are a linear pair. They're supplementary. 180 minus 46 is 134. So that means the rest of these are obtuse angles are 134. Remember what I said, only two measures on the entire diagram. Okay. I believe that the next page in your notes packet is crook problems. Skip those. We're not doing them. They're on page 17. We're going to skip right to page 18. Next slide. All right, so now we're taking it one step further. Oh, by the way, you should try number three and number four. Here are your choices for the angle measures, and tell me, um, tell me what, what type of angle uh, relationships uh, they have on your own paper. So now, we're still solving for x here. And here again, we're on page 18 now. We're doing three through six, OK? So um, we're still solving for x. But look, we've got some algebraic figures in here. This is 3x plus 15 degrees. Not x degrees, 3x plus 15 degrees, right? So let's examine the angles, find out what they are, and then we can set up and solve. So we've got two parallel lines here, all right? And we know that. Look, look at the hash marks. One hash mark a piece, so we know they're parallel. Check. We can use our angle relationships. All right. These are both northwest angles. They are corresponding angles. These are corresponding angles. Okay? Corresponding angles. So if you look at our chart, corresponding angles are congruent. So 135 is the measure of this angle. We also know that the measure of this angle is equal to 3x plus 15. So we just set up 3x plus 15 is equal to 135 degrees. All right, and we can subtract 15 on both sides. And then, y'all, it just becomes a regular algebra problem. 3x is now 120. Divide by 3 on both sides. And we get that x is 40. So x equals 40 is our answer. The measure of this angle is not 40, right? We know that. These two angles are congruent. Both of these angles measure 135 degrees, 
But our x value, if we plug in 40, we get 3 times 40 is 120 plus 15 is 135, which is exactly what we want, right? So x is going to be 40 here. We're not solving directly for their measure of the angle anymore like we were here, where we were told, oh, this angle is x degrees. No, now we're given a whole other figure. All right, look at number 5. Here again, two parallel lines, two hash marks. We're good. So these are on opposite sides of the transversal. They are outside the parallel lines. Look at our chart. Alternating exterior angles, right? They're on the exterior outside the lines, and they're alternating on opposite sides of the transversal. They're congruent. X plus 64 degrees is equal to 3X minus 26. All right, so we know these are congruent, so we just set them equal to each other. So we can subtract X from both sides, and we get, oh, that's minus X, not minus 2X. 64 is 2X minus 26. So we're going to add 26 to both sides. Simple algebra after this, after you set them equal to each other. 64 and 26 is going to be 90. So 2x is 90, and x is 45 after we divide by 2 on both sides. So there's x is 45. Okay. I want you to try 4 and 6 in the same way. Um, there are your choices for, for, and again, this is for value of x. This is not for the angle measure. This is for value of x. All right? Um, make sure you determine what relationships the angles have first. Notice here for number six, they give you A is parallel to B. They don't illustrate it with hash marks or anything. All they say is given A is parallel to B. That works too. All right, we have our parallel lines. Okay, last slide. Is it possible to prove that A and B are parallel? Justify your answer. All right? So we got to approach this from a different perspective now. Okay? Now we're given a bunch of angle measures. We need to see if they are in line with these. If they are, then they're parallel. If not, then they're not. Here, what they're asking is, do we have enough information to prove that they are parallel? Okay, so look at number one. See if we can determine it. Do we have enough information to prove they're parallel? We know that this means a right angle. So this is 90, this is 90, and then, well, here's a linear pair, right? This and this are, linear, are a linear pair, so that's 90, and then that's vertical to that, so that's 90. Okay, that's all they gave us. We don't know anything about this angle, this angle, this angle, or this angle. We have no idea. They don't tell us they're 90 degrees. If they were 90 degrees, then all the angle relationships would line up and we would say, yep, they're parallel. Right? Okay? But we don't have that. B, not possible. We can't for sure say that those are 90. We have no information in that regard. Number two, okay, here's 106 right see if you can follow my line of reasoning on this here's 106 okay this angle and the angle formed by adding these two together okay because if this little extra line sticking out here was not here we would just have two lines cut by a transversal um, and the angle formed by so I'm gonna bubble it all in here's that this whole angle These two are alternating exterior, right? Opposite sides of the transversal, outside the lines. So 49 plus 54, let's add it up. 49 plus 54, 9 plus 4 is 13, blah, 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 we get 103, okay? So this is equal to 103. These are alternating exterior. If these were parallel, then they should be the same, but they're not the same. So no, A and B are not parallel, we know. Because if they were, then alternating exterior angles would be what? I know I hear you say it. Congruent. Alternating exterior angles are congruent. So here, not possible. This one looks a little bit different. You're, set, you're asking yourself, when, where's the transversal? Well, lines go on forever in either direction, so here's our transversal. All right? So we got a 60 degree here, so we know that this is 60, right? And then we got a linear pair. These are supplementary. There's 120. 
because again, these add up to what? 180. 180 minus 60 is 120. All right. So now we have to look at, look at this. This angle here formed by adding these two together, 60 and 60 is 120. Okay. So this is 120, all of this, which means, oh, these two are vertical. This one's 120. This one's 60. We only have two measures, the entire diagram. So guess what? These are parallel. Check. Parallel. A. Okay. These are, these are a little bit more difficult to do just because you need to um, really see if you can use your angle relationships to plot the angle measures of the entire figure and make sure they all line up to be parallel. Okay, so the best brute force strategy to do these is just to find all the angle measures that you possibly can. If you can find them all and they all line up, great, they're parallel. Okay, in accordance with this chart. Okay, all right, I know that was a bit of a doozy. Hopefully you paused a little bit along the way to try the practice problems. Again, anything you don't finish is homework. Rewatch the video. I'm going to put it on YouTube. Uh, so rewatch it if you need it to get anything that you might have missed because we are going to be trucking along next class. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day.